Aloha, and welcome back to The Creative Life from the American Creativity Association on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Phyllis Bleeth. I'm president of the American Creativity Association. The title of today's show is Creative Thinking in Education. Joining me today is a very special guest for the American Creativity Association because it's Dr. Joyce Juntun. She is the founding board member and first executive director of the American Creativity Association, which was founded in 1988 when she was still teaching gifted and talented classes in Minnesota. Today, Dr. Juntun continues to serve on the board and her day job is as an instructional professor in the Department of Educational Psychology at Texas A&M University. Along with those duties, she is program coordinator for the undergraduate degree in creative studies and the master's degree in creativity and cognition. Her current research focus, however, it goes even further. It is on building academic success in high, high ability students who were raised in poverty. Thus, Dr. Jantun is a subject matter expert in our topic today. Along with her work, she has published several classroom activity books for teachers on ways to develop creative thinking within the content areas uh, and numerous books on the subject. So with that, Joyce, welcome. Thank you to be here. Yes. And do you remember when we first met? Oh, one of my first trips to the Austin area to Kings ISD. That's right. I'm going to take a moment and tell my story with you because it's so powerful and it got us to where we are today. So you you did come to the EISD and I had a five-year-old. My oldest was five at the time and only one. And I went over for a brown bag that you held for us parents for gifted students. And uh, he was brand new in the program. And there we all were. And at the end of about an hour and a half, you were just dazzling in the ways that creativity can be taught. And I had never understood creativity as anything, but if you were either born with it or you weren't. And I, and I often associated with art, which I was terrible at. And so I just thought I wasn't creative. And I left that brown bag with this such an aha that I booked myself on the very next conference at the American Creativity Association that was held in St. Paul, Minnesota. I was the only one that I knew who went. I went by myself, checked into my hotel, I went to the conference, and there you were. And I, I, I walked up to you and I said, you know, you came to Eanes and I met you and here I am. I don't know what this is all about, but you so inspired me. And I said, but I'm not creative. I can, I, I can only, really, I'm just an organizer. And you said, well, Phyllis, what we creatives need badly is organizers. And so whatever you want to do, you, may, you should do it. And I said, well, I want to start a chapter. She, you said, do it, do it. And, uh, and that I have never left the American Creativity Association. Today I'm president. Now that was, let's see, that was 1995. So it's been a long while. So here you are talking about this subject. How come you chose it for today's show and what gets you so fired up about it? Well, actually in turn, I was privileged to have a principal who understood how to really make this happen in the schools. And I even find today what happens is really one of three things usually happens in the school. Sometimes people, as you refer to, say, oh, I'm doing creativity if I add an art project to something in my classroom. Others do creativity, uh, what we call formally. They have formal lessons in creativity. But that principal, he was so smart, he wanted us to understand that creativity was a way of thinking, and therefore we had to embed it within the content we were teaching. It was a part of social science, part of language arts, and so on. And it was that understanding that I realized 
why many teachers and many schools would like to do things with creativity, but don't always go about it a way that has a lasting uh, impression and a lasting result. They do it the shortcut way. So I wanted to kind of take this opportunity then today to kind of share what are some of the things we did or that principal helped us do and help us understand that made creativity something that lasted forever. In fact, um, I get notes now for me, this started in the mid seventies. I get notes now and then from students I had in a second grade classroom that still have those tools and still use them in their adult careers. So that was what we were going for. Um, it's something that you, creativity is your birthright. Every single human being has it, whether you develop it or do not develop it, that part's up to you. And so, uh, this principle helped us understand if we did it as the way we taught content, it would have a lasting uh, result rather than something that just happened in that classroom at that time and it was gone the next year. That, that is just so interesting. You know, I get the sense because I later got involved in gifted education as well and started a parent support group for it. And at the time there was the Texas Association of Gifted and Talented and there was a national association for gifted and talented. So there were some, there were some circles within circles for supporting what that, what became really ways to encourage creative creativity because because there is a lot of synergy there and maybe you want to talk about it. But what I'm getting the sense of is that you were a classroom teacher K twelve, and you were getting this was not your day job to teach creative thinking. So you were creating, carving out a new, a new subject matter that, that it sounds to me like, you can correct me, that you were developing a curriculum and a focus on something that was holonically involved with whatever your current content was. And you were looking for support. At the same time, I think you have some books that help teachers. I mean, I think you were a pioneer is what I'm hearing. In, in creative thinking skills as a tool to learn in, 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 it, in your classroom and also to give teachers a way to bring it into the classroom. And Max, if you'd show the slide on these workbooks that Dr. John Toon has uh, developed over the years. Now that's a lot. You know, I have them, two of them here. One of them's developing creative thinking, which is just sort of the, the 101. I also have one creative thinking with foods. And for those who are watching this, they can pause the recording and they can take a look at the various ways that you you have out of whole cloth, I think, been a pioneer in bringing this very topic of today uh, to 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 everyone. Um, and what do you think of, you know, what do you think about that? I know I could go on. Well, actually, the pioneer was my principal. I mean, I've often said he was a principal at the right time in my teaching career. Creativity has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. But what the principal did was two kinds of things. First of all, he brought to our school Dr. Paul Torrance with his basic elements of creative thinking, um, Dr. Calvin Taylor, who had what he called the multiple talents of thinking, became Talents Unlimited. We looked at Frank Williams' uh, teaching strategies, Creative Parnes' problem solving process. And we kind of put it all together, but it was a principal's uh, purpose to say this will happen in your classroom. Now, I learned one of the first things I learned actually, uh, Dr. Calvin Taylor sent a teacher from Utah to our school. And I think it's always funny because um, she won volunteered to be in classrooms and nobody volunteered for her right away. And I went, oh, I'll take you. And so she came in and she did an example of um, one of Torrance's uh, basic creative thinking strategies. And my principal came walking by the door and he just opened it and he said, how's it going? And I said, I can do this. And he turned around, looked at me, he said, then do it. And that is kind of what started me. Then after that, I actually left the classroom to lead it within our schools. And so, um, those books came out of the fact that we focus on different content areas at different times because the principal wanted us to, which is, as you mentioned, similar and gifted, 
we were not to teach creativity as an add-on. It was to be an instead of. Instead of how you normally review, how can you do that same review using creative thinking? Instead of how you normally teach this, how can you use creative thinking? Now, there's a couple of things that were very important. The first thing was, since we wanted to empower students to be their own creative thinkers, we labeled everything we did by the correct name of the strategy. We explained, what does that strategy do? Then we did it within a content area. And the goal was that students can be a creative thinker when you're not around. Because what I see happening a lot of times is students do wonderful things with the right teacher who is guiding it. Our goal was, if that teacher goes, you have a substitute. If you go on to and move to another school, it's not doing that. Do you still know what to do? And one of our kind of groups kind of came in a way. I remember one day there was a substitute teacher who was trying to teach something. And this was in a fifth grade classroom. And um, all at once, one of the students raised his hand and he says, you know, we need some originality there. You just go over to the side. I, I know what to do. And he goes up and he says to the rest of us, okay, we know what to do. And so we always started up with a thinking warm-up. Dr. Paul Torrance talks about that. You can't get productive, creative thinking if you don't warm your brain first to be a creative thinker. So he looked around and says, all right, what should we do for our warm-up? And somebody suggested something, and many did it. And many turned around and said, okay, now for our lesson today, the way this works is, and he went on and did it, and the whole class participated. He got down, he looked at the sub, he said, that's how it works. He went and sat down. And so that was what the principal was saying. Do they need the teacher to be a creative thinker or have we done our job in such a way they don't need us, they can still be a creative thinker? And, and I think that's kind of one of the key things that has happened. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes several years of working on this, but the goal was accomplished. Okay, so I heard two things and I wanna uh, maybe build on it. You talked about warming up the brain and you talked about let's bring in originality. And when, when you first got introduced, you talked about principles that the teachers could learn to introduce creative thinking in the classroom. And I wonder, is originality one of them? And I know this is not a class in, cre in creative thinking today, but I, if you could give some examples, some hardcore examples of what those principles are that uh, the that, that the audience today could think about and, and get their teeth in, uh, I would I would appreciate that. So is originality one of them? Well, it's it's not what you call it. There are Paul Torrance has four basic elements of creativity, which most people know about: fluency, flexibility, original elaboration. Okay, but I don't remember. We combine so many things together that actually I would tell my students at the end of the year, which by the way we all these things, their bucket of tools. And we said to, we're gonna give you a bucket of thinking tools. And to my students, I said, I'm gonna give you 36 different creative thinking tools this year. You're gonna know what they are. You're gonna know how to use them. But guess what? Over your lifetime, you're gonna add hundreds more to that bucket. And you want a bucket because no tool works every time and every situation. So when you face a challenge, you have to be able to say, what's in my bucket that will help me? And you pull it out and you say, what does it do? So, so the only reason that that, I, that was one of the, as an example, strategies, but remember, we did a whole realm of them. And so it was just that when we started, we started with the Paul Torrance elements, and then we moved on from there. Okay, could you repeat them, the four, because I don't think every four basic elements. Yeah. And most are... people that are familiar with you know, creativity, these, unfortunately, these are the only things they know, and they miss all the other strategies, and that becomes the sad part. So, you know, Paul Torrance, because he developed the ways to measure fluency, flexibility, originality, elaboration, and you will see those in Calvin Taylor's work, you will see that talked about in, in Sidney Parnes' work, because those are the things people often think about first. But remember for us, because kind of the way we did it was we would uh, introduce them at our faculty meetings. Uh, we oh. had 
we had what we called the drip, I called it the drip method versus Niagara Falls. Now, what happens when people want to make a change? They often do Niagara Falls, which means they just flood people with information. They flood them with so much information, they walk away with nothing. So Mr. Bronis, my principal, had this idea that we would have 15 minutes of each faculty meeting devoted to one thing teachers could do in the classroom. And they would come in, we'd introduce the one thing, we'd explain what it did, what was the label, what did it do, we'd try out something with it, and we'd have a short discussion on how can you use this in math, science, social science, et cetera. Then they had the week to use it. And Mr. Brana said the goal was teachers would leave the faculty meeting knowing something they could do in their classroom that week without ever having to take one note. Mm -hmm. And that's what became the powerful thing. Drip, 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 drip. We did this for three years. Three years. It wasn't just a month here and a month then. It wasn't like a day before school started. Let's go for six hours. It'd be wonderful. It was drip, 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 drip. And so that's what I think made the difference in teachers being able to grab it and to use it because we did it by bricks instead of Niagara Falls. Okay, so you, you reminded me of sitting in that brown bag with you. And I'm just gonna, <laughs> I just I want to share with the uh, with with the watching audience and, and with you because this is a small kind of thing and yet it just impacted me so much about how I was leaving my own creative thinking on the table when I tried to do something. You said, uh, I'm gonna teach you brainstorming. And I'd heard of brainstorming, but you had a, it was a thing. You said, everybody get out a piece of paper and, and write down 10 things that you can do with the spoon. So then we all wrote it down, we're all happy, that was fun. Now you said, throw the paper away and write 10 more. And then there was some groaning and you smiled and then, and then we, you didn't say anything. So we all wrote our next list of 10. And then, then you smiled and you said, how, for those in the room, how hard was the second 10 for you? And a lot of people were saying, you know, why did you do that? I mean, I, I was running out at nine and you said, people really do groan. You said, People think that they're being creative when they've come up with three solutions to something. And what their creativity exists of is toggling between the first thing they think to do to the second to the third. And then they're tired and they're done. They think they've thought of everything and they go back to the first. And their idea of being creative is to keep rotating between the only three things that they come up with in that list, you know, the first list. And you said this idea of brainstorming forces you, you have to throw the list away. And that second 10, it was actually painful, but I grew, I learned, I knew, I mean, we got silly. And then you said, well, silly is breakthrough. Silly gets to innovation. And then you said, and you're not supposed to judge anything in brainstorming. There's no wrong answer. And you said that was really important. So I, I, I don't know if I'm feeding back to you what, you know, what those teachers are going through in a conference, because just that exercise for me, and I want other people to know too, if you try it, you're, you're gonna feel stretching in your brain and you're not gonna like it. Uh, I didn't, because I feel like I'm, I've gotta come up with the right answer. But I did realize that there was a whole world to, that I could stretch and move into to be more creative and you just demonstrated it. Well, and there's not to students the way we explained it. And I explained to my students every year is there is a wall. And, and the way I would tell the students is this, when, when the students write some answers down to an idea and then they'll go, I'm done. And I'll say to them, are you done? Or have you just stopped in front of the wall? And then I would tell them, no, all the great things in the world on the other side of the wall, but you have to decide whether you're going over the wall or not. See, that's one of the key things about creative thinking. You can choose to be a creative thinker. You can choose not to be a creative thinker. No one can make you a creative thinker. It's your choice. 
So when a student would say in an assignment, I'm done, I would just gently look at them and say, are you done or are you just stopping at the wall? And if they say, I'm done, I would say, fine, because I can't make them. But I tell them, if you choose to go over the wall, I am here to help you have strategies to go over the wall. I am here to be your cheerleader. I am here to give you a boost, but you have to decide if you're going over the wall or staying in front of the wall. And when you talk about silly ideas, I think though, and it came from Sydney Parnes who would often say, it is easier to tame a wild idea than to make a blah idea exciting. And so that's why we look at the fact and say <clears throat> that it's many times, I tell my students now, you know, even at the college level, when we're talking about this, that many creative ideas are raw ore. And so they're, they're just the raw ore, they haven't been refined. And part of what we do after we look at those ideas, we say which ones have possibilities and then we work to refine them. So no beginning idea is a finished idea. It's just a beginning idea. Not to tell you about uh, 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 why this became so powerful for the teacher, because Mr. Bruns, not only to his credit as a principal, would you believe he participated in everything we did for professional development. He didn't sit and watch those 15 minutes. He sat down at a table with teachers and actually participated with them so he understood. Then guess what he did? What? He used them in the faculty meetings and he oh, did no. what we should do in the classroom. So he might say to them, you know what? I think we need a little forced relationships here. And so he would bring up the challenge that we had. He would tell us the strategy we were going to use. And then he would guide us as he was, as if he were the teacher through the activity with the faculty. And so it helped all the faculty members to say, this is something we do to the kids. This is something we all do to change the way that we think. And we did find out, which is not surprising, that the greater the level the teacher had, of the understanding of creativity, the easier it was for his or her to encourage that in the classroom. I remember a teacher, I think she was a first grade teacher, Susie. Susie came to me and the first year we were doing something, she said, oh, my students are horrible. They're just, they're not good at thinking. They're, they're just awful. And I, I had to go to, my job was to go into the room, help you do it, all that. So we did that kind of thing. So I remember the second year, Susie came back and she said, Wow, you know, this year I got some really good students. They're absolutely fantastic. And I looked at her and I said, Susie, you're a better thinker this year than you were last year. You understand it more. And she goes, Yeah, oh, yeah. I said, See, when you understand what's like to think that way, it is easier to help your students understand. And that's one thing I feel badly about in schools today. We often have teachers do things to the students rather than help them learn how to use all these kinds of things themselves in their own life. And then that will translate to better use of the classroom. Well, you know, I we really need a couple hours with this because I want to make sure that we get some some of the core principles in that you are so passionate about. And and one thing I'm gonna just kind of feed back to you, you said to me, now Phyllis, we're not going to be talking about creativity today and doing like if you had a classroom where you had the kids building, you know, drawing or coloring or building things creatively, that, that that's doing a creative activity. And that is distinct and separate from this creative thinking skills that you want to instill into people uh, and and starting in the classroom. And I and I just wanted to separate that out. And and I want to leave people with the idea that, that where with resources, you know, where do they go from here? Um, you have two degrees, uh, degree tracks at Texas A&M and creativity, but as far as I know, they're, they're very rare. I mean, aren't there only a couple of higher education institutions that even give degrees in creativity? Yeah, and we're talking a very specific thing. We're talking about how it happens in schools. When students yeah. come to study creativity, you're, I mean, I have people from the military, I have people from 
uh, corporations, I have artists, whatever. So you're you're looking at creativity in a more general way. But we're talking about, and what I most want people to see is when you want to have to have have it in the school, it needs to come in bits and pieces with good support, and it needs to happen over and over and over again. And I know you want, uh, so I know you want examples. So let me give you a couple of examples. <laughs> Okay, so we we've got we got one minute. <laughs> okay. We talk about this comprehension and review, and so for example, one of the review things I did with the elaboration, I would have students start with a three-word sentence, a wind blew, and then they had to rewrite that five times, dropping one word, adding two, and then they had to identify the parts of speech in all five sentences. So they see that's uh -huh. an example. I use elaboration and I use parts of speech. Um, or the teacher that used fluency yeah, is introducing a comprehension. She had her little first graders draw a boat and she said, hear the word, oh, in boat. Tonight, I want you to listen. Every time you hear, oh, I want you to make a picture of what it is that you heard and bring them tomorrow. And the next day when she said, tell me about your picture, she wrote every one of those words on the board. And then she showed them about how if there's two vowels, you cross out one, you hear the sound of the other, and that's the word she used to teach them about long O. Oh, you know, all I can do, I think, thank you so much. Um, I, it, be in the room with Dr. Joyce Chantoon is, is such a privilege. And this is the area, this is your core value in the world and, and inspiration. And I, I think I should leave the viewers with the idea Look up the American Creativity Association, www.actcreatively.org. Uh, Dr. Juntoon is on the board today. You can reach out to us. There are more Creative Life shows uh, in the library at Think Tech Hawaii and on our website. And uh, reach out to us, ask questions. If you want to start something in your area, for local teachers or parents to support teachers, this idea of how to teach creative thinking, reach out to us and you can you can be directed to Dr. Juntoon uh, if, if, if this is your passion too. And with that, I will have to leave it there. You all have been watching The Creative Life on Think Tech Hawaii today. And we have been discussing creative thinking and education with our guest, Dr. Joyce Juntoon from Texas A&M. Thank you so much for participating and thank you to the viewers for tuning in. I'm Phyllis Bleas. We will be back in two weeks with another edition of The Creative Life. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.